we intend to pursue climate diplomacy and economic diplomacy alongside other pillars. To do this, in the next few weeks, we will be inaugurating a climate diplomacy network. Listening to what Carol said in terms of the challenges that private sector faces in this space is the fact that private sector feels like a lesser child in the conversation around seeking solutions to deal with the climate crisis. Many other stakeholders feel like they're lesser children because in that room, the ones who hold the accreditation to delegation of who speaks, the ones who hold the mic, as it were, is the state. And yet, like we have said, this is one agenda. This is one challenge. This is one problem where it is not enough that states act. We must all act in concert. But for us to act in concert, we must be part of that conversation. We must be in the room. We must be around the table and we must engage in solution brokering. That's our role. And so the, the, the role of um, the, the, the Climate Diplomacy Network will be precisely that. How do we enhance the capacity and the capability of stakeholders outside the state to be able to participate meaningfully and based on, on information in the context of you know, this conversation around climate. Secondly, how do we then understand the resourcing? Like, like, like Cyril said, there are lots of big figures being bandied around in the name of climate. You know, when you look critically at those figures, how many people actually, number one, understand them? How many people understand how to access them? What capacities do we require in order to be able to access those resources? It is not enough to just talk. The time to talk is over. The time to act is now. And so it is incumbent upon all of us to invest in a deeper, clearer understanding of what we need to do to address the climate crisis. And so part of our role as a, diplom as a, as a climate diplomacy network, which will have all the stakeholders within this space, including civil society, development partners, private sector, and government is precisely to be able to lift the voice of the continent, not just the country, the continent, and sustain the, um, the spirit and the commitments of the Africa Climate Summit. And so with those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you and I want to wish you very, very happy and meaningful deliberations. Thank you very, very much.